Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video I'm going to go into some detail about the worldwide invisible fish killer. So the main reason for the video, this actually happened to one of our customers last week. So it's not a tiny parasite, it's not microscopic um, bacteria, it's not ammonia, it's not nitrite or anything like that. It's actually a combination of many factors that can happen to all pond keepers if not kept a close eye on. And to top things off with a heat wave that's due to come in the next few weeks, um, it's important you know all of these factors just to ensure it doesn't actually happen to you because you could actually lose your fish overnight. So if you're new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed already, I own a company called Simply Ponds Limited and this channel is about everything that we know, we share with you, um, so you can hopefully learn some things and have a good um, pond experience. And in return, maybe you can give us a little subscription. It's free, why not? Click that button, show some appreciation and the more subscribers we have, basically means we know people like the videos and we'll make some more. So what is the invisible fish killer? Now, some of you, it may sound quite obvious, um, it's actually oxygen levels within the pond. So I know lots of you obviously know that fish and other animals need oxygen. Um, and in most cases, nine out of 10 times, um, aeration for a pond could just mean chucking in an air pump, job done. Well, in most cases that can work, but sometimes it's just not quite as simple as that. So there are some other important factors that you need to know about that should be taken into consideration. Okay, so the, the first one, this is the biggest factor of all. Warm water really doesn't hold oxygen very well whatsoever. As soon as, it warm, as, soon as the water warms up, oxygen levels drop drastically. Bear in mind warm water as a, as a whole in general for this particular video. So, so you've got warm water, now combine that with a few of these other factors. Low oxygen levels with the warmer water, combine that now with the next factor, which is fish overstocking. So you may think with the warm weather, if my fish won't survive in my pond, that means in a, a lake or a river or a um, another you know, natural pond, all the fish in that pond will struggle too. Well, things would be very similar, but one thing to, re to remember is that a natural pond or lake compared to a fish pond at home, if you took the amount of fish present in say a square meter of water and compared that to the amount of fish in a square meter of water in a lake or a large natural pond, um, you'd be very, very lucky to find a single fish within that amount of water. So it's very common to have say a 2000 gallon pond in someone's back garden with say 200 fish. But if you could take a bucket that was 2000 gallons you know, in volume, scoop out a, a section of water within a lake or pond or whatever um, in the wild and you will probably be lucky to find a single fish within that water body. So let's face it, the majority of people's ponds at home, um, the ones that we come across and we see it quite regularly, they are fully overstocked way too many fish for the size of the, the actual pond itself or the amount of water and even for the filters present. So the next issue is the amount of silt or sediment within the water. It's probably going to affect more of a, um, an unfiltered or a natural type of pond or a normal garden pond which is just completely being ignored. If you have clear water, obviously there'll be a lot more space for oxygen to saturate into that water body. Um, whereas if it was, you know, one third silt and two, two thirds of water. Obviously, um, there's not gonna be as much space for the oxygen to saturate into that water. So clear water will always hold more oxygen as well. There was another video I saw with, um, from Fish with Carl, a lake where they used to fish themselves, or they still do, um, at a hot summer, and they lost pretty much all the fish in there. The water levels were quite low. Um, there's too much salt in the water, you know, as much as they tried to aerate it with air pumps um, and moving the water around, it didn't really do too much. It's purely because there was just too much silt, not enough water, um, and the only way to really combat that would have to fill the whole pond up with some fresh water quite quickly. Um, but obviously trying to do that in a big lake or a pond it is quite difficult. And the next issue is algae and overplanting. So um, Algae, again, like silt, if you have too much free floating algae in the water, will also take up water space. Now, not just that, is algae is a plant, and obviously during the day it photosynthesizes and can produce oxygen, which we all know about. Um, but obviously at night time, if you have a pond full of algae um, and no air pump on, and there's quite a few fish in there, um, at night time, the algae will stop photosynthesizing 
and then take all the oxygen out of the water for itself. So it's the same situation for a heavily planted pond. Now, it may look nice to look at, and I know we always advocate having plants in a pond, but sometimes you can have too many plants. Um, and if you have too many fish as well, and if you didn't have a filter or an, a, a pump circulating water around to produce oxygen at night time, like the algae, will literally strip all the oxygen out for themselves and you can actually lose all your fish overnight. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we did a pond the other day, very similar to this one. Um, the customer, we were going to clean it the next day and for some reason he switched off his um, pump so his filter would drain out, so it was easy for us to do. Um, we could have done it without that anyway, but bless him. And um, he had, as you can see in the video, is not many, not, there's, there's not that many plants present, but it's completely choked with free floating algae. He switched his UV off or tried to change it over last year, but he never put one on. Um, so overnight, with the pump off, there's so much algae in there, literally took all the oxygen out from cells. And then um, he lost a, a good handful of fish within, you know, nine hours or so. So it happens quite quick. Luckily, we weren't there too long to get everything back up and running again. But it just shows you, um, you know, if you were to go on holiday um, and if you had a power failure, you have a heavily stocked pond and it's warm, this is a huge problem and it can literally wipe out your entire pond. And it's happened to so many people over the years before. I'm sure if anyone watches this video that's happened to will know how much of a pain that is and it's just quite heartbreaking. But um, the main thing to take into consideration is don't overstock a pond. Um, have some plants in it, don't go too mad. If you can, have it aerated properly. Majority of fish that we keep in this country are used to low oxygen levels in a pond. Is however, when it's extreme and it gets too hot and it's overstocked, then problems can happen very, very quickly. So this is just a very quick video. I hope you found it useful. If you have done, click on the like button. If you want to see some more, again, consider subscribing and thank you for watching.